Hello everybody, what is up? It is Stan the Man and welcome back to another Stan the Man podcast. It is the 15th of May, 2000 and goddamn 20. How are you guys doing today? I hope you guys are doing well. I don't really have a lot of time, so this podcast might be shorter than usual. In this podcast, I'm going to be talking about K-pop and the things that I'm behind on on the internet. Internet drama and how it might be worse than the coronavirus and also plans for my channel. Let's get on with the podcast, shall we? All right. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning, well, during the intro, I actually told you guys that this podcast might be shorter than usual because, well, one, I have a night shift today. Two, I also have to go work out. I do not like missing a workout whatsoever. And three, I have other stuff to do. Okay, so we are going to dive right into some local news. Okay, now in local news, okay, remember my you guys remember my old dear friend, all right, you know, the the dude that I speak so highly of in nearly every goddamn episode, Speed Andrade, I'm pretty, pretty sure you heard of him. Well, finally, this dude get, this dude literally got decked in the fucking face, okay? Now, apparently, what ended up happening was, okay, so... I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to give you guys a little bit of context here. So here on the island, there is this man called Otmar Odebat. He was an ex-minister, and also he is the head of the well, POR, P-O-R, uh, political party here on the island. Okay, he is very much a very influential figure here on Aruba, and I'm not really sure him and Speed. They're not really on good terms uh, with each other. So what ended up happening one day? His house really just catches on fire. So, Otmar, I'm going to call him Otto. <laughs> so, ah, fucking, I'm not going to call him Otto. What the fuck? So, okay, Mr. Odebat, okay, his house is literally on fire. And what does Speed decide to do? Of course, he decides to, well, flaunt his right to press as usual and decided to shove a camera in the man's face and live stream his home, his private domicile, you know, where he and most likely his family resides, basically live stream it burning. So, of course, you're going to be really mad. Now, like I mentioned in previous podcasts, okay, I really, okay, in Pavimento, we say, bisa su bong, bisa su mal, all right? All right, that means, okay, you could tell, you could say good things about him, you could say bad things about him, but one thing, one thing is for certain. You have to admire Speed's or Mr. Andrade's dedication to keep the public informed 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Hence the name of their new site or new system or whatever called Binti Quatro Hora. It literally means 24 hours in papimento. But, and I mean but, this man is known for violating the privacy of so many people for the simple sake of getting a story in. Now, one's privacy is something sacred. It's almost as sacred as someone's home. A home is someone's private domicile where you and your family can actually relax and actually have private time together and it is literally burning to the ground and to suddenly see this man shove a camera in your fucking face. He first asked him kindly, yo, can you leave? Okay, th this is a private issue. Can you leave? Now, Speedy just keeps on going on. I am doing my job. It's my right to prell. And of course, um, <laughs> so Otmar gets mad. Okay, but who gets the, the, the man that deserves a fucking medal here is Ralph Maduro. He's a coordinator. And he's a coordinator. Now, um, I'm going to link, I'm going to link uh, the live stream. I'm going to if they haven't taken it down, but I'm going to put a link for the live stream. And apparently what ended up happening was Ralph Lily had it and just knocked the fucking camera out of his face. So what happened during the footage, you can't really see. You can't really see much because, one, the phone just starts spinning. So you see sky ground, sky ground, sky ground, sky ground, and bam, it's that. But you can just hear, like, some sort of commotion in the background. Apparently, Speed got fucking decked in the face. Now, what ended up, like, making me laugh so damn much was when Speed picked up the fucking camera. And he was starting to look at the phone. He was just, look he was just like, looking at the phone. And he's, like, distraught. Like, oh, man. He, he broke my phone. <laughs> the dude looked like... The dude looked about two seconds away from crying. But... 
I hope this serves as a lesson to him. All right. Now he can. I'm not saying to get rid of his. Um, I'm not saying to get rid of his right to press. All right. Clearly, this dude knows what he's doing. But I hope this serves as a lesson. Yes. You have the right of press. You have the freedom of press. You have your job to do, okay? But there are certain limitations. I'm in the military. That doesn't mean I can just fucking pick up a rifle and go on a fucking rampage, all right? It doesn't work that way. You need to know your fucking place. And I, I mentioned this before. This is going to be my fucking mantra in nearly every goddamn episode. It's an old Greek proverb. It's called mathemata. Patemata, and it basically means learning through pain and suffering. Maybe the pain and suffering of being humiliated, okay, by this man. I, I'm pretty sure due to public outcry, Rav Madur has been arrested, okay, and speed, um, they charged him for assault, okay. But I'm pretty sure due to the public outcry, they're going to release him. They, they are definitely going to release him if speed doesn't really have, like, friends in his pocket or some shit. And at that point, it wouldn't surprise me either. Uh, but I really hope. The pain of that punch and the pain and the suffering of public humiliation will be enough for him to change his ways. Okay, now moving on to some international news. Okay, there is finally some good news coming from the Netherlands, the mother country, the father country, whatever the hell you want to call it. As the bars are scheduled to reopen their terraces under strict guidelines on June 1st. Yeah! Finally! <laughs> All right, but that's not all. In Amsterdam, a restaurant a restaurant called Mediamatic Eten is experimenting with ways to get people to eat out again. So how the restaurant is actually doing it, okay, they set up these little tiny greenhouses outside on their ter on their terraces, right, literally right by a canal or a sloot, as some people like to call it. Um, and these greenhouses can accommodate three to four people, and it can be, it's basically a shared enclosed space that a family can have. So it's actually a great way because... It keeps them separated from the staff while they integrate them, while they basically give them. Why, why am I saying integrate? What the fuck? Uh, while the staff serves them their food. Um, there's a link to a video on the BBC, and I will put that in the link of the description later if I have time to edit this today. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm running, I'm running out of time. I'm already running my mouth too damn much. <laughs> um, but I will... Ah, what the fuck am I talking about? So, it basically shows how the staff are interacting with the people and the people seem to be enjoying it a lot. Now, I'm not sure if they're just smiling for the camera, but this is a really ingenious idea. And, of course, I know some people are going to ask, well, why can't they do that in Aruba? One, those greenhouses, those greenhouses, they're made out of, some of them are made out of plexiglass, and, uh, newsflash, Aruba is fucking hot! <laughs> You're not, a, it's not only gonna keep the food warm, but it's, it's also gonna cook your fucking guests, so, in Aruba, they're gonna have to find other ways to do that, but it is a good step in the right direction. Uh, let's see where it goes. Let's move on. Let's move on. For those who follow me on Facebook, you guys already know that I am planning to when I'm planning ah, la, 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 I'm planning on making a video of me reacting to well K-pop, K-pop stars and K-pop music videos. Now, besides Gangnam Style or Gangnam Style, you know, when Gangnam Style first came to fruition back in when 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 the Gangnam Style Gangnam Style came out, 2010, 2012, I, I remember that it broke the YouTube uh, view counter. All right? So that's literally that's literally the only like k-pop thing that i've really heard about i've never really heard of k-pop in general i didn't even i didn't even know bts was a thing until a few months ago after i had like a pretty interesting conversation uh, with a friend now that got me <laughs> well that really got me thinking i am so behind i am literally so behind on a lot of the trends and controversies uh when it comes to trends and contra trends and controversies on the internet now why i don't fucking know when it comes to news and memes i am on top of that shit but when it comes to like internet drama or recent trends like k-pop or how Fortnite became a goddamn thing i am really behind i am either behind or completely completely oblivious as to what the fuck is going on now no i have not seen any k-pop videos yet because one i don't want to spoil myself i told myself that i will not be looking at or watching any k-pop content until i actually make that video which could be later this week if my schedule doesn't update and reshuffle and 
I simply don't have the time these days, okay? Like, I already missed the podcast. Usually, I like to put these podcast these podcasts out um, either on a Sunday or a Friday, but my work schedule just got updated out of nowhere, and so I re- and my personal life got in the way, so I really did not have the time to not only write the script, but I also had to, but also record the podcast. Now, these podcasts, they're, they're usually done in a series of steps. Now, usually the night or two days before, I write down, okay, wherever I go, where, wherever I go, whatever I do, whatever I read, I always have a little tiny note notebook with me all right and if something catches my eye i kind of make like a little bit of a bookmark uh, and just write a summary down and what i think about it and then at the end when i try to write down these podcasts i just look at the list of the shit that i made and see all right which one catches my fan which one uh, tic- which one tickles my fancy <laughs> oh you're cute but i'll kill you <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with me yeah but I, I don't know, man. I simply did not have the time to do that. Oh, what the fuck am I saying? Now, afterwards, there's actually recording the podcast. Now, recording the podcast is also a two-step process. So, first, I have to record it. Then, I have to edit it to make sure it sounds clean clean and crisp. And also, just splice it together in LumaFusion and then upload it via my iPad to the internet. Because, well, my, my fucking laptop just can't handle it. I think I'm going to have to pop in an SSD in my laptop because it's just way too fucking slow now back to this so (laughs) remember when i said i simply did not have time these days okay now i i wrote this i'm looking at the notes and the script for the podcast right now it it says in parentheses mention this during the podcast i wrote this shit last night okay as i am writing this it is 6 30 p.m and the local crackhead keeps calling the base landline he will not leave us alone (laughs) oh man but it's kind of weird it's kind of weird that okay i'm gonna sound hella arrogant right now i like i like to think that i have good situational awareness of the geopolitical climate on nearly anything that's going around in or going on in the world but when it comes to the fucking world of shit going on the internet you know like this fucking this fucking bermuda triangle of just controversies drama trends and stuff like that i am fucking oblivious to it like remember remember when logan paul nearly got his fucking channel taken down because he literally filmed a dead body in his japan vlogger and not only that i saw the rest of it like dude the dude has no had no respect for the culture whatsoever i just hope that he learned his fucking lesson uh but I literally did not know about that. The only reason, the only reason I knew about it was apparently the story got so fucking big. The controversy was so fucking big. It made headlines on the BBC World News site. And like, I'm looking out like, hey, wait a minute. Isn't that that Vine dude? Oh, shit, it is. Hang on, let me, my voice is getting crackly. I need, I need coffee. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the podcast, and this is my coffee voice. We're going to have a wonderful time. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop doing that. But, gee, I don't know. Like, uh, I, there was also this thing with this uh, iDubs. I rarely, I knew a little bit about iDubs, okay? I knew that he was uh, alongside Filthy Frank back in the pink guy days. Um, but other than that, I didn't really know much about iDubs. Apparently, he had like something called content comp and shit. Uh, literally, this, this is literally shit that I found out like weeks ago. And I don't know what the fuck happened, but I just know, I just remember Facebook just being fall, I just remember Facebook, my timeline, just being filled with like memes of this mustachioed looking motherfucker that looks like he got caught staring up a girl's skirt. Like, what the hell? Like I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get. It. There's also there's also like the Carson. Uh, there's this YouTuber streamer or whatever called Carson, and this Catarino Catalino scenario. I I don't even know who those people are. Okay, I really do not. This is literally shit that I found out found out about last week or last night or whatever while I was do- while I was trying to find stuff on K-pop, <laughs> but. 
I don't know, these controversies just started popping up out of nowhere. And you, everybody has to have an opinion. And I could have an opinion too, but I don't know these people. I do not know enough about what happened to put my two cents in. So if I had my two cents about this situation, it literally... If I stepped on dog shit, it wouldn't be worth the dog shit that I stepped on, okay? Like, in these types of situation, situations, I just avoid it and keep my mouth shut. Alright, like, as I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, I don't really... I don't really try to, like, hop on the bandwagons when it comes to internet dramas and stuff like that, okay? Like I said, most of that stuff, I'm either completely oblivious to it, and when I do see it, I tend to just ignore it completely. And not because, oh, no, I get triggered, man. No, nah, because it's not my business. It genuinely is not my business. Now, as much as many people would like to state that the internet is a bit of a safe space, Right, compared to mainstream media, it sure as shit falls for the same trends as mainstream media. Like TV, the internet seems to just thrive off of controversy rather than creativity. Right? Like look at TMZ, for example. Those view those videos, they still get tons of fucking views and they still they get as many views on TV in general. Alright. Now in particular, they thrive off of just controversy surrounding famous YouTubers, streamers, influencers, creators, etc. Now, I am aware that some of these people are an inspiration to many. Hell, I even have some that I fucking damn, just damn straight look up to. Right? But when it comes to drama, especially like the drama that happens between two famous influencers, creators, YouTubers in general... I tend to just stay away from it. I just tend to just stay away from it or ignore it completely. Okay? Now, uh, to me, drama, controversy, beef, or whatever the fuck you want to call it, okay? If it's digital, what do I mean by that? If it happens, like, through the internet, to me, it's just completely meaningless. Now, this is my two cents. Like I mentioned before, I have very, I have very hard views on the world, Okay? To me, the world is just black, white, with a few absolute shades of gray. Whenever you have a problem with someone, I believe it is best handled privately in real life through either verbal communication or physical. That's it. No, no, you're not dumb brain. Go fight. Sometimes it has to go to that point. Okay, sometimes you got to throw hands. All right. I'm gonna, like this mouth, this mouth right here. Okay, this mouth has gotten me into a lot more trouble than I'd like to fucking admit. But what I do like to admit is I am a firm believer that certain matters should be solved privately and should not be the business of hundreds of thousands and even millions of people you have literally never met in your goddamn life. Okay, so that's why, I don't know, I really don't get it. Like, internet drama is just completely meaningless to me because... There's no emotional buffer. Not, in real life, there's no emotional buffer. There is no protection against the consequences both of you will face for your actions. Okay, let me give you an example. I'm pretty sure anybody who has like some type of workspace, okay, they know about this, okay? Two people, they get into an argument in like a group chat, for example, okay? They get into a fucking argument, a really heated argument, and then you hear from a friend they've been arguing even after they got kicked from the group chat. Something like that, all right? Yet, the second day, all right, when they go to work, okay, they avo- in real life, they avoid each other like the plague, why? I think neither of these people have the mental strength or the fucking balls, okay, to face the consequences of their actions in the real world. Because like I said, talking to someone through a screen and talking to someone in real life is vastly different. There is no emotional or physical buffer between the two of you, all right? As I'm talking to you right now, I could be looking at you right in the eye, picking up telltale signs, whether you're lying or not. I can tell if you're I can tell if you're being nervous. You can tell if I'm being nervous. You can tell if I'm being nervous by tapping my foot. I could be looking around the room because maybe something you told me. I don't know, maybe something you told me I might not agree with, but I don't want to make you angry. So I don't and so I don't really say anything. So you start looking around the room. Body language, physical cues, stuttering, those type of shit. 
that type of shit you cannot convey real human emotions you cannot convey through a screen so that's why i'm like internet drama in general is just completely meaningless to me like um uh the whole Okay, like the whole, for example, I did not follow. I mentioned this in the pre- in the previous segment. Uh, there was this whole controversy surrounding uh, this dude called Cars. Call me Carson, and this also this other dude called Fitz. And I think is Fitz in is Fitz in a misfit. I don't, I don't fucking know. And this girl called Catarino, Catalina. I don't know. Apparently, some shit went down. What happened? I don't know. And since I do not know, I can't give an opinion. My opinion is not valid. That's just what I think. All right. But still, millions of people, not hundreds and uh, not millions, hundreds and thousands of people who probably haven't even seen these people in their life, they suddenly have an opinion on these things. And there's nothing wrong with having an opinion. But it starts turning wrong when you, when you literally just start attacking people for it. I think that's where you're going to have to draw a line. All right. Now, hang on. I need some coffee here. God damn. I'm tired. <laughs> um, much better. Okay. Like, for example, let's say, okay, I'm pretty sure some of you have gone through this in the past. I am a firm believer in resolving issues in private. Okay. Speaking to each other face to face. No screens. No messages. You can't block a physical conversation. You can block a jab, but you cannot block a physical conversation. So, let's say I want to confront a coworker because he's constantly late. And since he's constantly late, the consequences of him being late is that some of the guys, they have to literally stay hours on end to make sure the systems keep on running okay. All right. Those hours, they will not be paid for those hours. So it is, by definition, literal wasted time. Okay? If I'm going to confront that coworker, I'd rather do it calmly in a private setting. I'm not going to fucking blast him in front of everybody. Because nobody deserves... Like, it's unnecessary. Not only that... In Sun Tzu's The Art of War, you must give your enemy a way out. What do I mean by that? If you corner him, especially since he's literally being judged by so many goddamn eyes, he's going to feel like a ca- he or she, they're going to feel like a caged animal. And you know what happens to caged animals? They're going to start fighting back like they have nothing to lose. Those types of people are the most dangerous. What happens afterwards? Okay. Sure, you humi- you humiliated them. Things get ugly. What happens when the dust settles? The argument doesn't get resolved, and both of you end up with tarnished reputations. So, it's best to try. I'm going to say this. Try to deal with these things privately, even if it doesn't work, because real life is not like a video game. It ain't like a movie. It ain't an episode of Steven goddamn Universe, even though I love that fucking show. All right? Sometimes things just don't get resolved, but at least you can take pride in knowing that, hey, I fucking tried, and not many people can actually do that, all right? Oh, man, but when do you, when you, like, some people, whenever I say, hey, can we discuss this in private? No, I'm sorry, I don't want to do that. Bop, that's it. All right, cool. That just lets me know that either you don't have the, either, okay, two things. Either I did genuinely piss you off to the point where you literally never want to talk to me again. That's perfectly understandable. But two, and this is the most, this happens to everybody. They simply do not want to go through the pain or the pain or the mental stress of going through a one to one on person, even if it's just a private chat or even a voice call. That's already enough. Ah, man, ah, man, ah, man, ah, man. They fear the physical and mental pain that comes with confronting someone or confronting those not behind the protection of a screen. All right. Now, like I said, to me, that renders the whole beef, the whole disagreement, whatever the hell you want to call it, the controversy or whatever, just completely meaningless. Okay. I will say, though, I will say this, though, 
I will say this. Now, <laughs> some of these controversies, they get big enough to the point where they make some fucking fire memes, though. I'm not going to lie. Like, <laughs> uh, some of the memes that they produce is just crispy, juicy, fucking creamy memes. Just fucking delicious. But still, like, maybe that's the main reason why I tend to... I don't get... I don't hop on the bandwagon. You see that a lot, especially on YouTube. You see that, like, I'm not a YouTuber. I don't consider myself a YouTuber at all. I just do this shit for fun. If it goes somewhere, great! But I still have my military career to focus on. And so far, that is my main focus and will and will continue to be my main focus. But something that I've noticed on YouTube, okay? Like whenever there's a controversy, there are always a bunch of creators that hop on the bandwagon and try to analyze what's going on. And they just ch start cherry picking things that literally appeal to the internet's hate on this person who caused that uh, controversy. Now, to me, that renders the whole thing disingenuine. It it just means you have an opinion for the simple sake of gaining views. But I digress. There are some exceptions. There are some channels out there who analytically, without any bias, dissect what is going on. Okay, They literally inspect both sides of the same fucked up coin. Those are the channels. They, they don't get as much recognition and respect as they deserve. Okay, maybe I'll make a list of one. Make a list one day. I don't fucking know. But yeah, like I said. Internet drama, to me, completely, as long as it doesn't affect me or people I care about in any way, shape, or form, I stay out of it. It's none of my fucking business, all right? It's none of my goddamn business. I'm not going to benefit from it, okay? I'm not going to benefit from it. The, nothing from me is going to be taken away from it, so why give a fuck, all right? Like, ima like, imagine how fucking short some of the controversy would be if just nobody gave a fuck, all right? <sighs> Let's move on. All right, so this brings me into like another thing. Okay, now you hear me talking about that stuff. Okay, now people always ask me like, like, what are your genuine plans for the podcast? Okay, or the channel in general? Well, to be honest, I don't really know. I have a lot of goddamn plans. Okay, but uh, not a lot of time to do it. As I mentioned in the past, I don't have aspirations to be a YouTuber. Or just, I, I, I don't know if this podcast thing is even going to be a, be relevant. I just do it because I like doing it. Oh, man, but boy, <laughs> this brings me like back in the day. Oh, man, I remember between the ages of 13 to 15, back when Ray William Johnson and Smosh, back when like Smosh, oh, man, well, like Smosh and Ray William Johnson, they were just the YouTube kings back in the day. Like, we wanted to do that. Like, me and two of my cousins. And I got, I got, uh, there we go. I had to burp. <laughs> like, me and two of my cousins. I would, like, take out my janky-ass camcorder and we would just go make these shitty, short, shitty, short action movies, okay? Like, uh, our biggest inspiration back in the day was just, like, Freddy W. Freddy Wong. You can't remember when, when uh, Freddy Wong used to make all these freaking uh, action shorts, all right, using After Effects and stuff like that. Okay, like I wanted that. We wanted that, but like we we were we like the amount of work to edit the videos. Okay, we still had school and shit like that. It never got off the ground. <laughs> we even had a we even had a channel called Squad Five, and the shit we made just makes me cringe. Like we I like I'm getting stabbed by a fucking homeless person. I think channels are still up there. All right. <laughs> But now I have a bunch of stuff planned out and uh, the cool thing about just not making YouTube a priority is that I have time to focus on other things. I like to draw, I like to read, I like to write. And since YouTube isn't my job, if, if this thing ends up growing to the point where it can actually be a job where I actually get monetized by YouTube, great, fucking perfect. But I still have my military career to focus on even even let's say my military career doesn't work out i still don't think youtube would be a great platform okay even though the the, the possibilities on the internet are just limitless 
I don't think you, YouTube, due to like, due to YouTube's uh, strict regulate strict YouTube getting stricter and stricter and stricter on regu- reg- on regulations every year, it dampens the creativity. And I think that I think they're gonna end up damping it, damping it up so much that people will just. I don't know the content that'll be pu- that'll be pushed out here will just be stale. Fucking I don't like not mo- like fucking bad quality clay being molded by someone who doesn't really know what to do. Like channels that are getting the most amount of subscribers and the most amount of money these days are like these toy unboxing channels. Literally there is no creativity behind that, but why it gets plenty of views by kids, it gets plenty of watch time, it gets plenty of watch time because YouTube doesn't pay by views anymore. They pay by watch time and if advertisers like the video or not. I really I really got to like find out how the YouTube system works. I, I really don't know how it works. But I have a lot of plans like uh, the K-pop reacting to K-pop thing is one I am working with my COs. I'm working with my COs and also there's the press officer, the press officer on base seeing if I can actually make a vlog on base and actually record what we do on a day-to-day basis, kind of like a day in the life of a marine vlog. Uh, we'll see how that goes. I want to make I have a bag of MREs. I have a bag of rations <laughs> here from these things can last years. I want to make a video of me try out. These are these are actually new rations, by the way. Lots of fucking plans. But the podcast, the podcasts are still going to be a main thing, although the schedule will be irregular because like I said, my work schedule can update. Sometimes I'll end up uploading a podcast every Monday. Sometimes I might end up uploading it on a Friday. Sometimes I might upload it, maybe w- upload a podcast maybe once every month. <laughs> uh, you never fucking know. So I don't really have plans for the channel. I have plans for videos and stuff like that, but what my channel wants to be I don't know like back when I first started this channel I wanted it to be exclusively a music channel because I love making dumbass songs on my guitar and whatever digital audio workshop I'm using uh but ah uh, nah I, re- I really I really don't think so um what else uh, I also wanted this to be branded as a gaming channel I think I still have it branded as a gaming channel <laughs> like uh there's like a, a fucking horribly edited Borderlands two funny moments a battlefront funny moments i wanted like i did i did the thing i hopped on like the funny moments compilation bandwagon you know uh, back when uh, van oz teamed up with h2o delirious with h2o delirious mini lad terrorizer all those fucking gamer youtube game youtubers like i wanted to do that but uh, the equipment the editing and stuff like that i just didn't have time for it and it got to a point where playing video games felt like a chore and if i didn't enjoy playing video games like then what was the point of making the videos anyway maybe i might splice in some videos here because uh oh man when i play call of duty oh boy when i play call of duty i slay but i get so fucking mad (laughs) like that game is a fucking that game is like an abusive fucking relationship you know you two are terrible for each other but you keep on coming back because the sex is amazing that's it (laughs) but my god man i don't know i'm like reacting like uh yeah, I think my most view, uh, two of my most viewed videos are the childhood memories song that I made when I was eighteen, I think, and uh, the rea- and the video of me reacting to the Cruz Bros, um, the two famous TikTok stars. Like I mentioned, I don't find their content funny, but uh, who the fuck am I to judge? They they probably make more money in a year than I make in my goddamn than I'll probably make in my goddamn life, <laughs> uh, and people seem to genuinely enjoy the content. So who the fuck am I to stop them? <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. Uh, maybe some more reaction videos. Maybe I'll do a vlog. Uh, long plays. I'm I'm planning on streaming on Twitch, but I need to find some way to stream because I do not like uh, the PlayStation's built-in streaming settings. You know, because there's, like, this fucking banner that, like, why? Why is it there? Like, I get PlayStation, they just want to keep, they want them to know, like, hey, he's streaming from a PlayStation, remember that? Like, get rid of that fucking banner, please. 
Um, there's that. I want to start streaming video games on my laptop, maybe even start live streaming these podcasts on Twitch, uh, or even, uh, I get, or even like, uh, a live stream where I draw a lot of stuff, but the thing is, especially when I draw, okay, this is my stuff, I'm, this is what I keep telling people, okay, I'm really good at stuff, until people watch me do that stuff, <laughs> now what I mean, I, I'm pretty sure the minute I start sketching in front of a camera, it's, uh, I'm gonna get hella self-conscious, hella nervous, and these sketches, they're gonna be even more horrible than they are, than they are when I, when I don't have a fucking camera on me. Uh, for those who draw, you can fucking relate. Like, uh, when when people say, Hey, man, I want to watch you draw. The minute you feel like those two eyes burning in the back of your fucking skull. <laughs> uh, boy. The, the drawings, they just don't feel as good to you anymore. I don't know. So, yeah. We have reached the end, ladies and gentlemen. I really have to go. I'm going to splice this together really quick. This has been a very quick and chaotic episode. Now, stay home, stay safe, and I'll see you guys later. This is Stand Man, signing off.